grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome, friends, to our online worship service on this last Sunday of the season of Lent as next Sunday we invite you all to join us for Palm Sunday worship. It will be a special worship service put together again by the three congregations of the Lutheran Euronia ministry area. And I want to thank all who are going and who are already participating in that service. Thank you all for what you do before or behind the cameras and microphones. Next Sunday, Palm Sunday, I also invite you to come for another drive-by. Let us still be very careful, and maybe you don't even want to leave your car and keep your masks on even outside, but I invite you to join us for a drive-by to pick up your own palm leaf that will accompany you into the day and into Holy Week. At the same time, when you pick up your palm leaf, you're also invited to drop off a prayer request. The plan is to keep our big wooden cross outside the doors so you can put your prayer request on that cross and we will use those prayers on Good Friday. Also, we invite you for the series of services during Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, on Good Friday, and then, of course, on Easter Sunday, we will come together. So please watch carefully your inbox on your email accounts for all the announcements and instructions. On Monday, Thursday, and Easter Sunday, we also want to invite you for a celebration of Holy Communion. And again, we will give you some hints and some ideas on how to prepare for that and how to participate. And all that will be contained also in the Fritsch page, which we are going to publish and which you will receive in time. But now I invite you to join me here. Let us pray together. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us in these different and strange times to bring forth the growth of our faith and hope and love. May we, through life and death, live in the holy presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have Sue here with us. Hi, Sue. Can you talk? Yeah. Martin? Yes? Where is Jerusalem? Can we go there? Oh no, Sue, that's, that's not so easy, especially right now with the pandemic. You see, Jerusalem is, is far, far, far away anyway, and we still can't travel. Far away? Yeah. Like Toronto? Uh, much further, Sue. I mean, we would have to go to run to Toronto first and, and catch an airplane, and then it would take at least another 10 hours until we would arrive in Jerusalem. But why do you want to go there, if I may ask? To meet Jesus, of course. He went there, and he needs our support. They're going to do bad things to him. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Sue. And it's true, he needs our support. He sure wants our support. Let's go then. Yes, let's go and support Jesus. And let's do that right here and right now, without going anywhere else. Why? Is he here? 
And are they going to do bad things to, to him here too? Well, I think whenever we forget about the needs of others and when we forget God and when we treat Mother Earth badly, I think each time we do bad things to Jesus again. And again, and again, and again. Yeah, yeah. If, if we really want it and seriously try, God will also teach us a better way. Oh, help me, God. Help me to live like Jesus wants me to live. Nicely said, Sue. Amen. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time. All the light of sacred story gathers round its head. Take me, hopes deceive and fears annoy. Never shall the cross forsake me, though it glows with peace and joy. And here now is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to the Gospel of John, from the 12th chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Good news, the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the sun of bliss is beaming, light and love upon my way, from the cross the radiant streaming adds more love to the day. Pain and blessing, pain and pleasure by the cross are sanctified. 
sanctified. Peace is there that knows no measure, joys that through all time abide. And now may the grace of God be with us in our meditation and may his good news shine through. Amen. Friends, this morning's gospel is so rich, so full of nuances, and so stimulating. It reminds me of a kaleidoscope, you know, that kind of tube, and you look through it and Discover ever-changing forms and crystals of light. I can't look with you at all those images this morning, but one is shining through to me. You see, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus goes to Jerusalem only once, and that leads to his death. In John he goes several times, yet we are looking at his last trip to Jerusalem, the holy city. And so we see Jesus entering Jerusalem now for one last time to celebrate the Passover festival, only that this holiday will turn into our holidays, our holy days of Easter. And Jesus talks about seeds planted in the ground where they will give up their existence to bring forth a new plant, new growth. His words turn the disaster of his death into the promise of new gain, new growth, of fullness. And everyone can take part in this. I remember when I was young, how often I heard this, no pain, no gain. And how mad I could get when I heard it. Most of us, I didn't want this. I still don't want the pain. Who does? I disagreed back then and still now with a faith talk that seemed to accept, even invite, unnecessary pain and suffering and gloss over it. My emphasis was and can still be on Christ, the liberator, the one who ends suffering and pain. No, we don't want the pain, do we? And I don't think God does either. When I see one of you giving your all for your partner who is in decline, and when I see you suffer with her or him, when I hear you telling me of a grandchild or other family member who suffers from addiction, when you tell me about the loneliness of this pandemic, then I don't want you to suffer. I don't want anyone to be in such pain. Yet, our pain, our frustration, our searching for answers, then seem to elude us. This is all part of of the journey of life. And on that level it is true. No pain, no gain. And Christ Jesus enters in this morning to again remind us, he is Emmanuel, God with us. Christ knows the pain. God suffers with all of God's creation. God is not far removed, untouched and untouchable. God is here and now. Christ was and is in the seniors' home 
where the old die alone. Jesus sits at the deathbed of the father who fades away in the hospital where nobody can come to comfort him. And sometimes God sends in an angel, a nurse or a doctor or the cleaning woman, who is not afraid or shy to talk to this lonely man and share some warm words of comfort. You are not alone. And God will take care of you and of your family. It is so hard to learn in and through the pains of life. But I must also be honest and say the most important lessons I learned and am learning came with a certain amount of pain and suffering. And the Greeks had a good word for it, a crisis. Here is the truth Christ puts in front of our eyes today. The grain falls into the ground and gives up its existence. You go and look for it, but it is no longer there. Jesus did the same. Just like they looked for Jesus then in the grave, and he was not there. What is there, however, is new life, new growth, a new kind of strength. The mystics of all religions, certainly the mystics of our faith, have been talking about this all along. In the crises of our lives, we can learn the most. We can become stronger, wiser even. And so much wisdom is in fact rooted in loss, in pain, in unexpected, unwanted, unwelcome changes of our lives. But the pain turned into a blessing after all. How so? How could bitterness and frustration be avoided when things don't go as I had planned? when decline and destruction seems all around me? And how does growth and renewal come about instead? I think first through the realization and acceptance that I am not everything. It is the acknowledgement of a higher power. And then secondly, we enter and can enter into a conversation, a relationship, at times even an argument with that higher power, with the holy presence of God. You see, the pandemic has the potential for us all to grow, to come out stronger and more faith-filled, or even more bitter, resentful, and self-centered. Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this experience? No, the experience to come painful as it will be is my journey. May God's love shine in and through it all. Friends, when the pain of your life makes you want to cringe or lash out, when everything becomes too much once again, when you don't understand or see the love of God, know that God still remains with you, gentle, undemanding, but understanding and ever-present. May you look for him for God, this coming last week of Lent in the pandemic, and may you let him find you. Amen.
is a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's fountain in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my ransom soul shall find rest Beyond the river, Near the cross, a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There the bright and morning star sheds its beams around. Rest beyond the river. And now, relying on the promises of God alone, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and for all in need, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding with, your mercy is great. You, O oh God, wash us through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness, and give us, your people, courage to forgive one another. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation here in town and everywhere that the world can see new possibilities and empower us here at St. Mark's in discipleship that we follow in Jesus' footsteps. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You fill the earth with your presence from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder of the approaching storm. And you call us to care for all of your creation. Repair, O oh God, the damage we have done and protect your creatures from more harm. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding and wildfires, especially in the western regions of this continent. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You promise to write your helpful law in our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace. And give us the creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit, restoring us all the faith, the hope, and the love that is you. 
Bless those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are nearing the end of their life here, and all who grieve. May the joy of your peace take hold in us as the seeds and buds of spring take hold in the outside world. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. And so we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live. My peace I give unto you. And now, may God, the Creator, strengthen you. May Jesus, the Beloved, fill you with goodness. And may Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you. So blesses you, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Live in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.